In the spring of 1982, I got it into my head that I needed more than anything in the whole world to visit Action Park in New Jersey. The commercials, which played every seven minutes during reruns of Gilligan's Island and The Brady Bunch, spoke to the deepest desires of my 13-year-old soul. There's nothing in the world like Action Park, the jingle jangled. Golden-skinned teenagers frolicked in the world's largest wave pool, flashing their symmetrical white teeth. Others shrieked with glee and unconsciously flexed their abs as they whipped through the turns of a water slide. They seemed to be having the best collective puberty ever, free of pimples, braces, and social awkwardness, all of which plagued me more than I cared to admit. If I could just break into their social circle, I reasoned, my skin would clear up, my teeth would magically align themselves, and I could be the most popular kid at John F. Kennedy Junior High School in Port Jefferson Station, New York. And maybe, just maybe, I would develop even the slightest hint of muscle tone. Currently, when shirtless, I looked less like a boy than a xylophone. But I would occasionally amuse house guests by grabbing two spoons and playing Frere Jacques on my ribcage. Mike and Terry must have understood the magical powers of Action Park, because when I asked them at dinner one night to take me, they actually said yes. Awesome, I said. I need to buy a new bathing suit. I was thinking something white. I had recently seen an ad in which a very tan male model wore white Ocean Pacific short shorts. He bore a striking resemblance to me, insofar as he too was bipedal. So obviously we should have identical wardrobes. We'll shop for summer clothes when school is out, Terry said. That was the usual routine. On the first weekend after the last day of school, Terry, my mom, would drive my sister Jody and me to the mall, buy us whatever we needed to get through the summer, and then we'd head to the beach. Though it was never articulated as such, the ritual felt like a reward for surviving yet another year in the public school system. Just the three of us, buying new rubber flip-flops and bathing suits, jumping waves on Long Island's South Shore, wolfing down hot dogs with extra sauerkraut from the concession stand. It was pretty much the best day of the year every year. The next such outing would be our last, however. Terry was pregnant and due in early August. Aw, oh, man, I can't wait that long. I want to go to Action Park this weekend, I whined. Spearing a chicken cutlet with his fork, my stepdad Mike said, It's mid-May. I doubt Action Park is even open. He was right, of course, which filled me with rage. Mike was a tough-talking, bearded hairstylist who, much to my chagrin at the time, had married Terry the previous fall. He wore black leather jackets. I dreamed of collecting cashmere sweaters. He rode a Harley Davidson. I prayed nightly for a Volvo. He was a quintessential Long Island Italian. I yearned to convert to any form of Protestantism, not because of a firmly held religious ideology, understand, but just so I could officially call myself a wasp. He and I had absolutely nothing in common, except for an apparent love of my mother.